What's going on guys, it's Rylan with Rylan's Amazing Photography and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be giving you all a recap on Nikon's recent presentation that they gave and just kind of go over what they talked about in that presentation and then I'm going to give some of my thoughts on what I think um, is to come based on Nikon's kind of inferences that they threw out at us. However, before I get into the video, if you're looking for a great last minute Christmas gift, this book is called Out of the Darkness. It is my first year in photography. You can use the links down below in the description to go and purchase it. Or you can go to my website, www.rylandsamazingphotography.com and scroll down till you see the book and read about what I say to do in that. Um, so let's go ahead and get straight into the video. Nikon said that there was going to be a lot of new um, Z lenses. That was one of the big main topics of this little presentation they gave. But one thing that stood out to a lot of people and one of the big things that they were saying was that there are going to be two new DSLR cameras. Um, personally, I think this is a really smart decision on Nikon's part. I've been saying for quite some time now that I think they need to bring back the DSLRs because mirrorless just hasn't been cutting it for Nikon and it doesn't take a lot to see that when you look at their financial reports. So, I believe that these cameras are going to be the Nikon D580 and the Nikon D860. Um, now, I'm going to get into more info on those in a minute. Nikon also announced that they're going to be adding multiple, I believe was the way they said it, new F-mount lenses. Which is also kind of shocking, but I also think that's really smart. Because so many Nikon users um, and just so many people, even like just camera owners... So many of them have the Nikon DSLR systems and they haven't moved to the mirrorless. Well, here's what I say about the lenses. The Z lenses, you can just use on the mirrorless cameras. The F lenses, you can use on the DSLRs and the mirrorless. So I've been saying I think that Nikon needs to really get back um, on these F mount lenses because, I mean, anyone can use them with a Nikon camera. So they should really focus on that more. So let's go ahead and get into some of my predictions. So, the Nikon D580, I believe this is going to replace the Nikon D500, um, I think it's going to have 30 megapixels, I think we're going to see 15 frames per second, which is a step up from the 10 frames per second that the D500 has. I, I don't think there's going to be obvious, um, typically the D500 is more for sports photographers and wildlife photographers, so... Most of them are already going to have lenses that are vibration reduction. Um, so there's, there's no point in including the IBIS in there. And the IBIS is going to make the price shoot up. Um, this price is going to be a really good price. Um, I believe that they're going to come in at $2,499. Um, Nikon needs loyal customers to come in and pay that amount. Um, it's still going to be an APS-C sensor. There's going to be dual card slots. And something that I'm thinking also possibly might happen is 4K 60 FPS. But there's no crop. The D500 has somewhat of a crop. I can't remember the exact number. It might be a 1.5 crop. Or it might even be a 2 times crop. I, I can't remember for sure when you're shooting 4K. Um, and a lot of people don't like that. So I'm thinking possibly they will eliminate that feature with maybe a far more firmware update going into the Nikon D580. So, we'll see. So, the next camera that I think is going to be the DSLR that's released. The D580 was the last one. The next one, I believe, is going to be the Nikon D860, which is a step up from the Nikon in what most people consider to be the best DSLR ever. Um, I believe the Nikon D860 is going to be the step up from the D850. I think it's going to have 45 megapixels like the um, D850 had. Um, I, I do think they're going to be having a higher frames per second. I think this D850 is going to, or I'm sorry, I think the D860 is going to have 12 frames per second, which is a step up from, I believe, the 7 to 9 frames per second that the D850 had. I think there's going to be IBIS. Um, th there's no reason for there not to be IBIS. I, I mean, the price is... The price is going to be around the range where they they should be able to include IBIS in that. Um, I believe there's also going to be 4K 60 FPS. Um, it is possible that we will see Nikon go into 8K on this camera because if Nikon is going to go into 8K, 
why not just do it on what is possibly the best DSLR in history and just go all in. I don't think we're going to see this because that would also shoot the price up more than what they're already going to be asking. And the D850 was more of a camera center for photographers and I believe the D860 will be as well. So I, I don't think we're going to see 8K, but you never know. Um, so for the price range, I'm saying Nikon is going to price this at $4,000. Um, I, I think people will pay it too because anyone who has a D850 absolutely adores it. I don't have a D850. I adore it. I feel like that is the best DSLR camera that you can get. Um, and I strongly, I strongly suggest if you're going to be having a DSLR and you can afford that to get a D850. Um, so yeah, I believe the D860 is going to come in at $4,000. So next I'm going to talk about possible F-mount lenses that we might see from Nikon that I think would be a smart move on their part. The first of which is the 600mm F4 lens. Um, now I know that Nikon already has one of those lenses and it's extremely expensive, but it's also extremely outdated. Um, if you compare the Nikon 600mm to the Sony 600mm or the Canon 600mm, Canon and Sony have Nikon beat, and it, it's really apparent when you test those out. I think that Nikon is going to reproduce this lens, and they're going to make it much lighter like the Sony and the Canon, um, because the 600mm that Nikon currently has is much heavier than the Canon and the Sony. So they really need to compete with those. I believe the lens will be called 600mm f4 VR G2. Um, I also believe that they might offer this lens for Z cameras. That's not 100%, that's just a prediction. There is no reason why they shouldn't offer that for a Z camera because this, the Canon does and Sony does. So I don't know why Nikon wouldn't as well. Here's the big kicker. I think Nikon is going to charge $13,000 for this lens, um, which is insane, but if you're a professional wildlife photographer and you shoot Nikon, you're going to go out and you're going to spend $13,000 to get this lens. That's that's my thoughts. I mean, if I could afford it, I would do it. So the next F lens that I think we are going to potentially see is an 85mm Prime. Um, I believe it's going to be at f1.4, and I think the lens is going to be called Nikkor 85mm f4 VR G2. So um, I... Nikon already has an 85mm, and so you're probably thinking, they already have this, why would they make a G2 of this lens? Well, there are some major issues with the Nikon 85mm Prime that's currently out. Um, it, it's really, when you're shooting backlit, you're dealing with a lot of chroma, chromatic aberrations, and that's really irritating. Um, and it's a lot to recover, and it's just not very... It, I just don't think the quality is where it should be when you're comparing it to Canon's and Sony's 85mm. So, I think that it would be smart for them to do that. I also think that it's possible that they will also offer this lens in a Z mount. Now, granted, obviously, um, this is the same for the 600. You could use either of those lenses on a Z mount um, because you have the FTZ adapter. But... I think it's possible that they'll produce these lenses both ways where it will actually mount directly onto the Z series cameras. So I believe that the 85mm Prime is going to be at a price point of around $1,800. It's possible that we'll even see that go up to $2,000 for this lens. Um, just a prediction. So next I'm going to talk on lenses that Nikon actually confirmed during this announcement. Um, and the lenses that they confirmed are as follows. A 28mm, a 40mm, a 50 millimeter macro, a 60 millimeter macro, and a 105 millimeter macro. We don't know the f-stops, but those are confirmed, and those are Z lenses. They are prime lenses, which means they are fixed. You can't change the focal length. It doesn't zoom. It, it's just there like it is. So, here are some lenses that I am speculating for the Z lineup of cameras. I think that we might see, if we don't get that f lens of the 85 millimeter f1.4, I think that we're going to see a 85mm 1.2 for the Z lineup of cameras. And it's possible that we'll see that even if we do get the um, F lens of the 1.4. Um, I, I think it would be a smart decision to implement more primes um, fixed for portraiture for the Z lineup of cameras. So I, I feel like that would be a smart decision. I also feel like that we might see a 24 to 105mm F4 lens. 
Now, that that's asking for a lot because those lenses are pretty difficult to develop and it's not something that you see a lot. Um, there are a very versatile lens when you're going from 24mm to 105mm. You can do a lot with that. Um, so I think it will be smart if Nikon implemented that into the Z series. Um, something else I think we're going to see is a 100 to 400 zoom lens for the Z cameras. Um, this is huge. Nikon, I don't believe, you can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, I don't believe Nikon has a 100 to 400 millimeter lens. Um, that's a Nikkor lens. Now, Sigma and Tamron might have that for Nikon cameras, but I'm not sure Nikon actually has that themselves. I think this is going to be a f5.6 lens, and I think that will do really well because that's going to be, um, that should be at a reasonable price, and it's a good focal length that um, people getting into wildlife photography can purchase to kind of experience what it would be like to do wildlife photography. Another lens I think we're going to see is a 400mm f4. It's possible it could be a f2.8. This is also for the Z lineup of cameras. There's not much to elaborate on that. It's for wildlife. Um, pretty much you're going to use that for a larger animal unless you're using a teleconverter along with it. And if you're getting a low f stuff like 2.8 or f4, um, it's easy to use a teleconverter along with that. So it's possible that, you know, that would be a pretty popular lens, but I'm not really certain that lens will be great. And then I'm concluding this list with the 600mm f4 that I already talked about. Um, I mean, I am fairly certain that we're going to be seeing that as a prime lens for Nikon, and I think it would be extremely smart of them to do this um, because Canon and Sony have them blown out of the water in the wildlife department. And Nikon DSLRs are known really well for wildlife photography, so we'll see what they do with that. As always, I want to know your all's thoughts on Nikon's announcement. Do you think we're going to have a Nikon D580 and a D860? Those could be huge cameras that could really turn the tides back towards Nikon and get them on the right track. Um, those DSLRs will be huge, um, and I think that people would love them. What are your all's thoughts on the lenses? Do you think we're going to see a 600mm f4? I really hope we do. I can't afford it, but I would love to see Nikon develop a lens like that to compete with Sony and Canon. Um, it would really turn the tides of this never-ending camera battles in their favor. Um, thank you all so much for watching today's video. If you've watched this far, definitely make sure that you go down below and like the video. While you're down there, go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a video. I hope you guys have had a fantastic Thanksgiving. And I expect to see each and every one of you tomorrow for the Woodland Photography video. Once again, thanks so much for watching, and I hope you guys have.